Hello and welcome back. So what I want to talk to you about in today's electronics tutorial is the TL431 programmable precision reference IC. This is a component that's been around since the late 70s and it's still in widespread use to this day. I mean most of the major silicon chip manufacturers produce this under some name or form. And it's most commonly found in isolated switching power supplies like phone chargers and laptop chargers, but you can also use it in linear regulators. So what I want to do is look at how this thing functions, how it works, what's inside of it, look for a good simulation model, and then simulate using LTSPICE most of the common circuits that you can find in the datasheet. So if you're curious about that and much more, then keep watching. So let's start things off by looking at some of the parameters and the description of the component found in one of the datasheets. So since most component manufacturers produce this component, there's a lot of datasheets, but I've chosen this one since it seemed to be one of the best. So we can see that this is a free pin component. It comes in various packages, so you can have it in this TO92 package, so it looks just like a transistor or you can have it in this 8-pin package, even though only 3 pins are actually used. Other manufacturers provide different package options though. For example, Texas Instruments offers a quite wide range of packages in 3, 5 or 8-pin options. So depending on what you need, you can just choose whatever you want. And if we look further, we can see the block diagram and then an equivalent schematic diagram. So if you try to actually build the circuit, so the one found here, it won't really work that well because the transistors are not identical. So there are various differences between the transistors. So from the block diagram, we can see that this thing contains a 2.5 volt voltage reference. So this is a band gap voltage reference. And that means that it's quite stable. So even with temperature variations and current variations, this IC will provide a very stable voltage reference. It has an internal op amp that's used to compare the input signal, so the one on the reference pin, with the signal coming from the internal reference. And based on the difference between the two, so in case the input signal is larger than the reference, it will turn on a low side transistor. And other than that, it has some internal protection diodes. Now, if we look through the various parameters, we can see that the component can handle up to 37 volts, but this is dependent on the manufacturer. It can handle quite high currents up to 150 milliamps. And depending on the package you're using, you can even dissipate up to a watt on this thing. Now, if we go lower, we see that the datasheet contains multiple variants of the IC. Now, the main difference between these variants mostly relates to their precision, so how precise their voltage reference is, or the case size, which will impact thermal characteristics. So the first thing the datasheet will tell us is just how accurate the voltage reference is. First of all, at ambient temperature, so this is the manufacturing tolerance, and then the variation with temperature. So we can see that depending on which component we're looking at, we can get more or less precision. So with the TL431C, so typically you only have three millivolts of reference voltage variation with temperature. So temperature going from minus 40 to plus 85. Then it will tell you how much current the input pin is using. So in the order of microamps. And this is important to mention in case you are using very large resistors to supply the input signal. So it's not a perfect high impedance input. It will use a few microamps. Now there's another important parameter here, and that is the minimum current needed to ensure correct regulation. So to have the band gap reference working correctly, you need to make sure that the cathode current, the current going through the IC, is at least 0.5 milliamps, but just to be safe, one milliamp is recommended. And then there are some other parameters here. Then the datasheet describes how some of the parameters were measured, so what was the test setup for them, and it also gives you some interesting information about 
the capabilities of the internal amplifier. So we get the open loop voltage gain figure, what is the frequency up to which the circuit will still amplify input signal. And you can see that for the on semi mate TL 431, unity gain is reached at around 700 something kilohertz. And on the right side, you also get the noise. So in case you're trying to make a low noise power supply, this is something you will be interested in. Now, if we compare this to the component made by other manufacturers, let's say the one made by Texas Instruments, so this is the datasheet from their website, we can see that the TI part has a much higher bandwidth, so it can handle signals almost up to 2 MHz, but on the other hand, the noise of the TI part is much larger. So here we see that the noise stabilizes at around 125 nanovolts per root hertz, whereas the on semi component was below 50 nanovolts. So depending on the application, one TL431 will be different from the other, but only for these, this sort of very specific parameters. And of course, if you look at other manufacturers, you will have all sorts of other variations in these values. Now, one of the interesting things, since we're talking about noise that appears in the Texas Instruments datasheet, is not just the noise going from 10 Hertz up to 100 kilohertz, but the noise that is below 10 Hertz. So in case your application really requires a very stable voltage source, this datasheet also contains some information about the noise below 10 Hertz, and also the schematic diagram of how the noise was measured. So depending on what you're doing, this can be interesting or it can be completely irrelevant for you. So that about covers most of the information in the data sheet. Of course, you can look at these data sheets. You will find them in the description. And now let's look at some simulation models. See how good these models are. So while looking for simulation models, I came across this interesting post. So this is from the Texas Instruments support forums. Basically, some guy, Yankel, hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, was asking why there's differences between the TI model and the on semi model. I mean, this is a perfectly legitimate question. When you're trying to simulate a circuit, how do you know which model is better if you have two different models? And he goes on to explain that the two models have slightly different behaviors, he also posts the model that he used. Interestingly enough, the model that he's using for the on semi part is attributed to Christophe Basso, an expert in power supplies. And then he's explaining what is he found different between the two models. And finally, somebody from Texas replies and says, yes, 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 the models are different and uh, we will look into this and they shut off the post. And this happened in 2016, so they're not looking into this. Anyway, if you go and look for the models from the two manufacturers, so from Texas and Onsemi, the TI model is still this one, so nothing changed in the meantime. And the one from Onsemi is not really this model, it's a different model. I'm not really sure where this model is from, but we can try all three of them out. So to test things out, I prepared this little simulation here. Basically, I made a little symbol for the TL431 added all three models that I found, and then we're using exactly the setup that was on the post on the Texas forums. We're applying a voltage pulse going from zero to five volts through a one kilo ohm resistor into the reference pin. And then in the cathode, there's again, one kilo ohm resistor and the circuit is supplied from 12 volts. And if we run this, we can see that all three models switch basically at the same time, so the 2.5 volt reference is working correctly in all of the models, but the difference that they were talking about was what happens with the reference pin. So if we look with the original on semi model, nothing happens, voltage rises, there's nothing to prevent this. If we look at the TI model, again, nothing happens, but if we look at the model that was attributed to Christophe Basso, we can see that at 2.5 volts, so let me just make this a bit more clear, if we plot against the voltage that is found on the signal source, at 2.5 volts 
when you reach the threshold of the comparator, we can see that this model stabilizes the input. So the voltage on the input reference pin flattens out at 2.5. So which model is correct? Now, as the post said, one model is more complicated than the other, but that doesn't make it better. So for that, let's try to perform this exact experiment in reality and see exactly how the waveforms look like. So I mounted the TL431 on this little test board. Basically, I'm inserting a triangle wave coming from the signal generator from 0 to 5 volts and I'm supplying everything with 12 volts. And now if we look at the waveforms, so with yellow we can see the triangle wave after passing through the 1 kilo ohm resistor and with blue we can see the cathode voltage again after passing through the 1 kilo ohm resistor. And if we compare this to what we've seen in the simulation, well we can see that the 12 volt in the cathode slowly decreases, so even before the circuit switches, there is some sort of current consumption. And if we look at the voltage and the reference, it increases. And after the circuit switches, it doesn't stabilize, so it's not perfectly flat. It still increases a bit until it becomes completely unstable. So basically, none of the simulation models represent this behavior exactly. Oh, we gotta fix the model now. So before starting to simulate anything, we need to make a proper simulation model that represents this behavior accurately. But that is something that I will be picking up in part two of this three part video. So for now, hope you got some useful information out of this. Leave your thoughts in the comments. Thank you for watching. Make sure to subscribe to be updated with all my latest videos and see you next time. Bye bye.